going to go back into the hat for our last team today. And uh, just go to... Uh, scrape around. Just, just scrape around. Make sure I don't grab one of the other uh, nine pieces of paper that's in here for next week. But I've pulled out this one. And it is the Western Bulldogs, mm. Gus, the runners-up. Um, obviously a pretty gutting... Well, I mean, there was a lot of positivity in the grand final for the Western Bulldogs up to a certain point, and then the end result is they've been absolutely smoked yeah, with one of the fifteen minutes. <laughs> one of the yeah, one of the yeah, biggest smashings we've, we've seen in the grand. Oh, I watched the second. Oh, I watched the last quarter and a half of this game again the other day. Just an absolutely pristine example of AFL football, like just. I mean, and you can blame the Bulldogs because, for some of it because they really dropped off for their pressure. They really struggled to get the ball out of the middle as well and they didn't change things. The, you know, four guys in the centre, for such a deep midfield, they kept the four same people in the centre square for most of the uh, the second half. Um, but on the other hand, it was just perfect footy from Melbourne. And I don't know if any team could have done much about that on the day. Uh, the Bulldogs are going to be up there again. There's no reason to think they won't be right up there. I think that the midfield, if it's you've got to remember like Trelaw and Dunkley missed a lot of footy last year as well. So they didn't have that depth through the mid. Well, they still did, but they didn't have the exquisite depth that we were expecting for that middle part of the year where things get tough and, um, you know, the, the grounds get stodgy and slow. So I think that'll benefit them if those guys stay fit. I think that the pickup of Tim O'Brien, a little bit of an underrated one over the offseason. I thought that what they really missed was that kind of intercepting but still tall centre-half back. Um, the Alir Alir kind of example of how good he was for Port last year. I don't know if O'Brien can be an All-Australian, but I certainly think he can fill that need and allow Alex Keith just to worry about the body-on-body -body stuff. Um, and I think Aaron Norton's about to go nuts. Saw him in the headband the other day. I think that that's a yeah, sign a that he's about to become a superstar. Nah, I think he's hair, one year but away. Keep he's the headband. A, he's a, a haircut away. I think he's. I think he's got that full nineteen eighties uh, vibe going on with his hair and the headband and the big high marks. And I, I, I would be very surprised if he doesn't elevate his game even further next year. He's just so confident. Yeah, yeah. Like he 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 genuinely believes that he is about to mark every single ball that gets kicked on the field, yeah. even if he's like 200 metres away. Like he just he just has every single ball in his hands before it's I keep thinking it's, it's he's going to like jump on a post or something. Like to try. <laughs> yeah, he probably yeah, will. I, like, At I some literally, point, yeah. or like, I keep, when he used to, when they used to do the games in Ballarat, the dogs, I don't know if they're doing it again, but that fence is like one of those um, metal fences, the white picket metal fences. Oh yeah, and I was like, "Is he just going to run up and jump onto that and like take the mark running out of bounds because he just wants the ball that bad? Because he's that desperate to mark it in the air that you're just never <laughs> sure quite what he's going to do." Um, look, I think Josh Bruce being out for most of this season will hurt. There's still question marks over Tim English. I think even as a even as with with Steph Martin in the team, like. He was getting – Tim English was getting beaten up in the practice game by Peter Wright as the backup ruckman um, in, in against Essendon. And, like, Peter Wright's a pretty good backup ruckman, you know, but if he can't even be trusted to play those 10, 15-minute stints or 10-minute stints or 5-minute stints in the ruck without you just getting slaughtered in the hitouts, like – I'm not sure what that means for Tim English going forward generally. Um, other than that, yeah, I think they're pretty complete at the moment. Like, they, yeah, they probably do need another tall forward, but that's hard to find. And Steph Martin in the ruck is a question mark just because of his body. He's like 35 now. But yeah, they're so good at winning their own footy that does it really matter? It's certainly not going to matter in terms of the – the home and away season, maybe in a final. I mean, we saw what happened with Max Gorn, Luke Jackson and and Track and Oliver just taking the game away from them out of the centre. But it's not going to matter unless they're playing against the absolute elite teams. So 
Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. They're going to be awesome again. They'll be a top two or three side along with the Lions and along with the Demons, I think. Yeah, and I think Norton can kick, you know, 60-odd goals um, this year for sure. But the problem being with Bruce going out mm. is that I think Jamara Hugo Hagen will, will play, but he's not the same he doesn't look, player as Josh Bruce. He, I can certainly see what people saw in his junior yeah. stuff, the athleticism and yeah. stuff, but... I don't know whether it's a confidence thing or it's a commitment thing or, or whatever. And I don't want to be too rough because we've only seen him sort of in, in a couple of games last year and he's only 19 or 20 or whatever. But, like, he just doesn't look like he's got the pace of the game at all at the moment. Uh, and no. and as and as you say, if he is going to play and play consistently in place of Bruce, they need him to get up to speed really, really quickly because he's going to need to to at least play a role of some description with a goal or two chipping in here and there. Yeah, yeah. I think he's still a little while away. And I think yeah. that ultimately he's kind of a he's kind of a Norton. Like he's kind of that that athletic mm-hmm. player well, who is more similar to Norton, whereas what they need to replace Josh Bruce is a different kind of underneath player. Underneath the ball kind of yeah, marker. Body yeah. on body kind of guy. Yeah. And I don't know if that's well, they don't have his that, go they don't so, have that on the list, so no, just... I mean <laughs> Yeah, I think Shaq, you'll probably play back. Shaq yeah, is and, not. And obviously Sam Darcy's not ready to Shaq play yet either. So. Well, in that, again, not to keep harking back to that practice match, but it is the last time we saw them play. Like, mm. Matt Guelphy just shoved Josh Shackey off the ball, like, very easily at one point. And I got about four messages at once <laughs> from people watching the game just being like, oh, God, look at that, like... Mm. This is a little halfback flanker who's a half forward flanker who's just shoved his key position player off the footy. Mm. Yeah. He, yeah. He's no good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. I, 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 he's certainly not going to be able to do that role anyway. Oh, Josh, so... I'm talking about Josh Shackey, not... Uh, yeah, no, I know. Yeah, 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 I'm, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not running off that uh, you wagon by any stretch at this point. I am running no, off Josh but... Shackey. Shaqie's not going to be able to play that Josh Bruce no. role, and that that is the concern for me is that yeah. that forward line, the mm. disruption that that um, injury has had. But obviously, you know, Bulldogs they, they're a good team. Yeah. They've they've got one of the best. Along with, yeah, they're one of the best lists, possibly the best list. Really, I mean, it's hard to go past Melbourne, but Dogs just have so many stars, don't they? It's just it's um, only going to matter. Team. It's only going to matter in the really big games, like mm. anything else. But that's also. You know, oh, of course, also of course, when it matters, of course, that's extremely like, relevant. But like, mm. they're going to be a top two or three side purely based on the basis of how much talent they have outside of that. It's only going yep. to be in the absolute nitty gritty. And by that point, who knows what's happened? Like Stephen May could have broken his face or been suspended by then. Like anything could have happened. Anything could happen by the finals. So yeah, I mean. It, it is it is a problem, but it's only going to be a problem that rears its head in in very specific circumstances. Mm. Yeah. Well, let's hope that um, Josh Shaky doesn't kick Stephen May in the face, and then Stephen May retaliates and throws him out of the MCG, and then he ends up with a broken face and a big long suspension. <laughs> um, anyway, Gus, that's the end of our rollicking run through eight of the no nine, nine of the man. eighteen teams. Yeah. 